Welcome to part four of the ROS Prototype to Production on Ubuntu Core video series, where we're talking about taking your existing ROS Prototype to Production by packaging it as a snap and shipping it on Ubuntu Core. In part three, we packaged our ROS Prototype as a snap, but it required dev mode. Today, we're going to create what's called a gadget snap that will allow us to use our prototype in Ubuntu Core without dev mode. Remember that this is also a blog series. If you'd prefer to read it, the link is in the description below. Okay, let's get started. So, what is a gadget snap? You're already familiar with snaps containing user applications since we ran our ROS prototype snap on Classic Ubuntu in Part 3. But that's still running on top of an OS and kernel where every component is packaged as a deb. Ubuntu Core, though, is based entirely upon snaps, including the OS and kernel. This all runs on some board. But we're missing something important. How does this thing boot? That's where the gadget snap comes in. It includes a grub or uboot configuration and a file system layout. We don't care so much about that here, but the gadget snap is also one of the ways devices can be differentiated from each other even if they're based on the same board. The functionality we're interested in is the fact that gadget snaps can expose specific hardware on the board to the rest of the system. Specifically, we can use the gadget snap to make the kabuki accessible from our ROS snap even when strictly confined. Eventually, there will be ways to do this without requiring a custom gadget, but this is how we do it today. So, let's make that gadget snap. Canonical publishes gadget snaps for all reference devices, including generic AMD64, i386, as well as the Raspberry Pis 2 and 3 and the Dragonboard 410C. If the computer on which you're going to install Ubuntu Core is among these, you can start with a fork of the corresponding official gadget snap maintained in the Snap Core GitHub organization. Since I'm using a NUC, I'll start with a fork of the PC AMD64 gadget. If you're using a different reference device, fork that gadget and you can still follow the rest of these steps. Now check out the snapcraft.yaml included in your gadget snap fork. You'll see the same snap metadata we discussed in part 3. Since snap names are globally unique, you'll need to decide on a different name for your gadget. I'm going to use PC Turtlebot Kairofa. Once you decide on a name, register it. If you'll recall, back in part 2 we installed a udev rule to ensure that the turtlebot showed up at dev kabuki. Let's take a look at that rule real quick. It's outside the scope of this series to explain udev in depth, but this file includes the information necessary to uniquely identify the kabuki by using its USB vendor and product ID. Let's go ahead and steal those and use them to write the snapd version of that udev rule. We do that by adding a slot in the gadget snapcraft.yaml. We'll call that new slot kabuki. You can use whatever you want here, just adjust the rest of the directions accordingly. The interface it's using is the serial port interface. Here we're going to use the USB vendor and product IDs that we got from the udev rule. Finally, we specify that we want the symlink at dev serial port kabuki. Why not just dev kabuki? Because SnapD only supports namespaced serial port symlinks to avoid conflicts. You can use whatever you like for this path, but make sure to follow the dev serial port whatever pattern and adjust the rest of the directions accordingly. So now let's actually build our gadget snap. This step is easy, just run snapcraft. And now you have your gadget snap. You don't technically need the gadget snap in the store just to create an image, but there are two reasons you'll want it there. Without putting it in the store, you have no way of updating it in the future. Without putting it in the store, it's impossible for the serial port interface we just added to be automatically connected to the snap that needs it, which means the image won't make the robot move out of the box. Since we've already registered the snap name, we can just push it up. We want our image based on the stable channel, so let's release into that. Now, I didn't run into this here, but since it's a gadget snap, you may receive an error saying it's been queued for manual review. That's true, right now, gadget snaps require manual review, but that will change soon. You'll need to wait for this review to complete successfully before you can take advantage of it actually being in the store, but you can continue following this series while you wait. I'll highlight things you need to do differently if your gadget snap isn't yet available in the store. Now, if the review process takes longer than you expect, make a post in the store category of the forum. I'll include a link in the description. As you'll remember, our raw snap currently only runs with dev mode and still assumes the turtlebot is available at dev kabuki. We know now that our gadget snap will make the turtlebot available via a slot at dev serial port kabuki, so we need to alter our snap slightly to account for this. Fortunately, when we initially created the prototype, we made the serial port configurable. We just need to take advantage of it. 
Let's do that by altering the snapcraft.yaml of our prototype. We are modifying the snap here, so I suggest changing the version. Now this field is only for human consumption, it's not used for determining which snap is newest, so this isn't required, but it certainly makes support easier. Now that we have a gadget exposing the Kabuki via an interface, we can use strict confinement instead of dev mode. Every interface has a producer and a consumer, respectively called a slot and a plug. We already have the slot, and now we need to plug into it. Let's define a new plug called Kabuki that uses the serial port interface. Finally, let's take advantage of the serial port flexibility we introduced in part 2 and specify that our launch file should be launched with device port set to the UDEV symlink defined in the gadget as opposed to dev kabuki. We also specify that this app should utilize the kabuki plug we just defined, which grants confined access to the serial port. That's it! Let's rebuild our snap and release the update. This time, since we're no longer using dev mode, we can release it to the stable channel. So that's it for part 4. In case you ran into trouble, the gadget snap I made here is available for both AMD64 and the Dragon Board. Links are in the description below. In the next and final part, we'll put all these pieces together and create an Ubuntu Core image that's ready for the factory.